Now, even a cursory glance will tell you that this is not uh, a Hardener engine. Um, this video is going to be really quite, quite different and I hope you find it interesting. Um, this is a Perkins. It's a Perkins 6354. Every now and then a customer of ours will ask us to restore a non-Gardner engine. Um, we've been involved in Mercedes, Listers, um, Kubota, all, all sorts of engines. But I thought that this would be particularly interesting to compare with the Gardner because I understand that Perkins actually owned Gardner at one stage. Now this 6354 produces 115 brake horsepower at 2800 RPM. So in terms of horsepower anyway, it's equivalent to um, perhaps a 6LXB or even a 6LW. Um, it weighs about half a ton. So it's half the weight. I'm going to guess about half the size, although we'll see that more whenever the end, this one's um, completed. So you're talking about twice the power to weight ratio. So my objective is not to denigrate Perkins at all. I have a lot of respect for Perkins. After all, um, the Massey Fergus tractor used Perkins engines. And as a schoolboy and as a young man, I spent many a happy day farming with Massey Ferguson tractors. So I'm going to take you through the process of restoring this engine stage by stage. And um, I think it should be a very interesting comparison. But of course, a lot of those differences can be explained by this simple fact. The Perkins was fitted by the turbocharger. And there you have it straight in front of you. Of course, the first question we have to ask here is, why are we restoring this engine? And you can see the reason why there in front of your eyes again. Um, it had a catastrophic mishap and number four um, big end got completely damaged and in fact the shaft is so badly damaged that it can't be remachined and we had to fit a new one close up that's a close-up of the damage on the big end this shows you the smashed shells and it entailed uh, new conrod new pistons and of course new new gaskets and so on here you have a new shaft ready for insertion. New shaft back in, all torqued up exactly as it should be. Now, here you'll have a freshly pushed in liner in the Perkins. You'll notice this, <coughs> it's not flush here. This is known as a fire ring. I'm not too sure why that is. Um, these liners are not a terribly <coughs> tight fit. <coughs> they can be pushed in handy enough for us. The Gardner liner is a very tight fit and has to be pushed in under high pressure. <clears throat> Another significant difference is that the compression ratio on the Perkins is, I think it's 28 to 1 or 22 to 1, I'm not too sure. Whereas the highest in the naturally aspirated Gardeners was um, 18 to 1. This gives you some idea of how the timing is set up on the Perkins for both the injector pump and the, uh, the valves in the head. Um, it looks really quite complicated, but in fact it's not. Each one of those gear wheels has timing marks on them and it's just a matter of getting them all lined up. Now on the Gardner, it's even simpler because it's all done for you. It's not really possible to do it wrong unless you're particularly careless. On the LW engine uh, in particular, there's very little choice about uh, timing. It's all done for you whenever the engine left the factory. On LXB engines, there there is a bit of variation. You can introduce some uh, timing variation on the, on the injection pump. Uh, but it's rarely it's rarely called. Okay, the moment you all are waiting for, we'll fire up and see how she goes.
got something out of that. Just a quick comparison between Gardner and just a quick comparison between Gardner and Perkins from our point of view. Uh, the engine was cold there, and that's why she's a little bit smoky. Um, again, what's the conclusion? I can't say that Perkins is better than Gardner or Gardner is better than Perkins. That's not my objective. It's just a very simple comparison um, of the job of rebuilding both engines. So thank you very much.